Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. Today let's solve another classic dynamic programming problem, coin change. And we get a pretty simple uh, description. So we're given a list of coins of different values and we're also given a total amount of money that we wanna sum up to. But we want to use the fewest number of coins possible to make up or to sum up to that amount. And it's possible that that amount of money can not be made up with any combination of the coins that we have and then we want to return negative one if that's the case and luckily for us we're actually given an infinite number of each coin so in the first example we have coins of value one two and five and we have infinite quantities of these coins. The amount that we wanna sum up to is 11, and basically, you know, just look at this. What's the fewest number of coins we could do? Well, of course, we wanna use a five because it's the biggest one. We can use another five, and then we just need a one left if we wanna sum up to 11. So in this case, you can see we only needed three coins. These, This is the fewest number of coins we needed, so we can return three. In the second example, we have a coin of value two, but we wanna sum up to three. We can try two plus two, but we know that's four, so we went over three, so there's no way to possibly sum up to three, so we return negative one. There's no possible solution. So your first idea might be, can we just be greedy? Is the problem that easy? Can we just be greedy? And let's look at this example. So let's say these are our coins, one, three, four, five, and we wanna sum up to seven. So when I say greedy, I mean, okay, we wanna sum up to seven. Let's just start at the biggest coin we have. So let's start at five. So now let's look at the biggest coin again, five. If we add a five here, we know we're going over, we're going over the total amount seven, right? So we don't add another five. Well, let's look at the four. Well, we know five plus four is also gonna be more than seven. Five plus three is gonna be more than seven. Okay, but we found a one. Luckily, we have a one. So let's add one to it. Now we're at six. So let's add a second one. Now we got to the sum seven. So we basically went down from the biggest, smallest coin values, right? That's what I mean when I say greedy. Let's pick the biggest one possible first. So notice that this took us three coin values, right? So our result in this case would be three, but is that the minimum amount of coins? The answer is no, because, you know, just looking at it, we can tell we got a three and we have a four. Three plus four is seven. That means the minimum amount of coins is actually two. So this is a counter example. We cannot be greedy if we wanna solve it. So the next thing you might try is like a brute force solution, right? So to do the brute force solution, we need to implement some kind of depth first search or backtracking solution, right? So let's look at the same example, one, three, four, five, and amount sum to seven. So what would a backtracking solution even look like for this problem? Well, it's gonna be brute force, right? So, so we have four coin values. So that means in our decision tree, we have four possible choices. We can choose a one, we can choose a three, we can choose a four, or we can choose a five. In this case, the remaining amount would be six, because seven minus one is six. In this case, the remaining amount that we have to compute would be four because we're taking seven minus three, which is the coin that we chose. So we get four as the remaining amount, right? In this case, we would have a three. And in this case, we would have a remaining amount of two. So since none of these are zero, once we get to zero, we know that, that we've computed the total amount that we want. But right now we have to continue going, right? We have to continue doing the brute force approach. Let's start at this side right now. So we still have four coins, right? We have unlimited quantities, so we can choose the coin one, we can choose a three, we can choose a four, or we can choose a five. If we choose a one, we'll have a remaining amount of one. If we choose a three, we're gonna get a negative one. What does that tell us? That tells us if we chose a five coin and we chose a three coin, then we get to a negative value. That means five plus three cannot be the amount. 
So we don't have to keep searching here. We can stop, right? We got to a negative value. If we keep adding values to it, it's just gonna become more and more negative, right? And you can probably notice that since these values are even greater, two minus four is gonna be negative two, two minus five is gonna be negative three. So we can't go down these paths either. We don't have to search them anymore. And so now here we're gonna see, okay, we can choose a one coin. Of course, we can choose a three, four, and five, but we can see from here that that's not going to work. That's going to lead us to a negative value anyway. If we choose a one over here, then we know we're going to finally get to a zero. So this is what we want, right? We took a five from up here. We took a one from over here, and we took a third one, right? So then if we count how many coins we chose down this path, we know we get three coins, right? And we get to a zero. So of course we don't have to keep searching anymore. So we found one possible way where we can sum up to the amount seven. We know it has three coins, which, you know, from the previous example, we know that that's not the minimum amount of coins, but we found an algorithm that at least tells us a possible solution. So we can kind of keep track of that. The minimum coins we can set to three. So now I'm going to show you what happens when we go down this tree path, even though we know that the solution is actually three plus four, which is two coins, which either of these is going to get us to the correct solution. I'm going to show you what happens when we go down this one anyway. So we can choose a coin one, three, four, or five. So if we go down this path, we will have a remaining amount of five. Here we'll have a remaining amount of three, here we'll have a remaining amount of two, here we'll have a remaining amount of one. Do you kind of see how we're taking the original problem, which is seven, and then breaking it down into sub problems like six, and then breaking it down even further into five? And not only that, we have sub problems, yes, but do you also see that these sub problems are repeating themselves? Here we have a remaining amount of one. Here we also have a remaining amount of one. So do we even have to compute this path? Because we already know if we have an amount one, it takes only a single coin for us to be able to reduce it to the amount zero, which is what we're looking for. So since this subproblem repeats, I don't have to compute it. I can just borrow from over here. So in that case, we see the same thing happened though. We use a coin one and we get zero and we see that, okay, it took three coins for us to get to zero, right? We took a one, a five, and another one from over here. So basically we got the same thing that happened over here, just in a different order. And just to make this a little less messy, I'm just going to tell you that none of these are going to lead us to the optimal solution. So now let's look at this case. We have a remaining amount of four. How many coins does it take for us to get an amount four? Well, let's brute force it. Let's check every possible combination. Here we'll get a one. Here we'll get the value we're looking for, zero, that's great, but let's just look at this last one. With five, we'll get a negative one, meaning we can stop searching. So this is awesome. We got a zero, and let's count. How many coins did it take us to get to this zero? We took one, four, and we took a three, so this path is only two coins long. We see our minimum is currently three, but we can actually replace this now with a two because two is the minimum number of coins needed to total to amount seven. So we know this is the correct answer, but let's just see what happens with the remaining stuff. So first, let me just look at this one. We see we actually already solved this sub problem over here, so we don't really need to solve it again. We know it takes one coin for us to go from one to zero. And what about this three? Okay, well, we can do the same thing, right? One, three, four, five. 
And I'll just tell you from here, we're not going to find the optimal solution going from four to three and more. That's going to obviously be more than the current minimum of coins that we have, which is two right now. So this is not going to lead us to the correct solution. But you see that once we compute this stuff, then we have one last subtree over here, right? This original three. But once we already solve the sub problems of this, do we really have to solve the sub problems here? No. If we store it in memory, if we have like a cache or you can call it DP, we do not have to repeat these sub problems. So the way I just solved this was called top down or top-down memoization because we're doing it recursively, but you can actually solve this with a true dynamic programming solution, which is bottom up. And it means exactly what it says. So bottom up, basically, instead of solving the original problem where the amount is seven, we solve it in reverse order. We start at the smallest one, which is zero, right? This zero over here. So we wanna know what's the minimum number of coins, we can call it DP of zero. So for amount equals zero, what's the minimum number of coins for us to sum to zero? Well, we know it just takes zero coins, right? What about if we want to know what's the minimum number of coins for summing to one? Well, we can look at our coins. We got a one, a three, a four, and a five. These will all cause it to be greater than one, but we just want a one so we can take just this, meaning it only takes us one coin to sum to one. And then we can just repeat that process, right? So for a DP of two, so we want how many coins does it take for us to sum to two? Well, we got four coins, right? These three will cause it to be greater than two, so we don't use those. But what about this one? Okay, we get a one, so it takes one coin to sum to one, but that's something we already knew. So if we want to compute DP of two, we can take one plus DP of one. Because we know these three coins are going to be too big, but we have a one over here, that's value one. And we also know that that's not enough, right? Two minus one still leaves us with a remaining amount of one. But we just computed that up here. We know for us to get the minimum number of coins to get a value one, it only takes one coin. So that means that if we want to get amount two, it takes at least two coins. And let's say we repeat this process for all values, for all amounts from, from all the way starting at zero all the way to seven over here. So I computed it from all the way from zero to six, but the last one we really, really want is amount equals seven. So let's compute that DP of seven. How do we get it? Well, we still kind of have to check every single coin. So what happens if we get coin one? Then we are then we take the result of one, meaning that's how many coins we use, not the value one, because we needed one coin with a value one. And now we have a remaining amount of six, right? DP of six. So how many coins did it take for us to compute DP of six? Well, we already computed that. It took two. So we get one plus two equals three. So that's one possible solution. But is it the minimal solution? Well, let's look at if we use the coin value three over here. Well, it takes us one coin. So we take one plus DP of four because that's the remaining amount we have to use if we take a coin value of three. And lucky, luckily, we already computed DP of four it is one. So then we get one plus one equals two. And we know that this is the real result that we want. But even before we know that, we would repeat this process. So technically, if we do the bottom up dynamic programming solution, we are going to repeat this for the remaining two coins. So for four, we would get one. So we'd have one plus DP of three because four minus or 
because seven minus four would leave us with a remaining amount of three. And in that case, we know DP of three is one. So we would have the total of two again. So we see that there are actually two solutions. And we know we have one last coin that we technically have to check, coin five. So we'd use one coin for value five. And then the remaining amount we'd want to compute is DP of two. And we know that DP of two is value two. So this would result in a three, which is not what we want, right? So from these four values that we computed, we want to take the minimum, which we know is two. So we can return two in this case. So that took us forever, but luckily the code is a lot shorter. So just like we showed, I'm gonna have a DP array and I'm gonna initialize this to be length of amount plus one because we are going from zero all the way to amount. And the default value I'm gonna give each uh, element in this array is amount plus one or you can do like infinity or whatever the max int is like math dot max integer or whatever in your language but amount plus one is basically a max value anyway and we know that the base case for this is the dp of zero meaning if we want to compute amount zero that it only takes zero coins and now we're going to start computing every value in dp so for every amount a in range and we're going to do this in reverse order not for, or rather bottom up so we're going to go from one all the way to the amount and we technically are still doing it in a brute force way so we are going to go through every coin so for coin in our list of coins so we're trying to compute this a amount so we're going to take a and subtract the current coin that we're looking at if this is non-negative so if it's greater than or equal to zero that means we can kind of continue searching right so this means we possibly found a solution for our dp so for this amount a we're going to set it to the minimum of itself and one plus dp of a minus c so this one comes from this current coin that we're using c and dp of a minus c comes from for example let's say our coin value was four and our amount that we're trying to compute a is seven basically we're saying dp of seven is equal to one plus dp of three because seven minus four is three. So we're saying that this is a possible solution. And actually that's the only thing that we have to do. This is basically it. This is like what's called the recurrence relation. And so now the only thing we have to do is return what we're looking for. So DP of amount. So this is what we have to return, but we remember one last edge case. If we could not compute the amount, meaning if so we can only return this if if the value that's stored is not the default value so if it's not equal to amount plus one right which was the default value that we gave it so we'll return this if it's not the default value otherwise we're gonna have to return negative one meaning we could not compute this amount with the given coins so this solution does work and even though it's pretty efficient, the time complexity is actually big O, the amount that we're given multiplied the number of coins that we're given. And the memory complexity is big O amount because we see we have a DP array that we're having a potential value for every single amount. So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, Please like and subscribe, it supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.